The Panasonic S1H is a great video camera packed with tons of different features. However, the menu system can feel a little daunting because there's so much different information in there. So we're gonna dive through the menus and uncover everything that you need to know about this camera, as well as how to set it up for your needs for filmmaking. So once you turn on your Panasonic S1H, we're gonna go and dive into the menus and let's explore some of these tabs. Off the bat, you have five different tabs on your main page here. And we're gonna be looking at these first three. This fourth tab is your My Menu. So this is where you can customize any setting and add them to your own list, um, keeping things nicely organized since there's a lot of different settings to go through. The third wrench icon, you have your card format as well as the slot function. So if you wanna do photos or videos in one or backup record, you can select that just like on your GH5. Keep going down here. We have our monitor frame rate. I choose 30 frames per second. There's really no need to display 60 frames per second. It helps save on battery life. Live frame rate, I did this with the viewfinder as well. Um, Instead of 120. One thing I really enjoy about these cameras is the battery level. Instead of just a bar, which is random and you're not really sure when it's gonna die, to a percentage. So I can tell I'm exactly 35% battery life. Your status LCD is right up here. And what's really cool about this camera as well as the S1 is that you can, it'll show your battery life as well as your storage, how much battery life is left on the battery and how much storage is left on the card. So I like that even when the camera's off, I always know, oh, it's, it's kind of nice to see. If you wanna turn that off, you can do that right here. On the very first tab, let's go into the movie record. And as we can see, our exposure mode, most of us are gonna be shooting manually. And here we can find our photo style. You can definitely use any of these. Most of us are gonna be using Vlog, so I'm gonna shoot that. Synchro scan, turning this on allows you to fine tune your shutter angle. This is incredibly helpful when you're dealing with flickering lights and actually get rid of it in camera, which is so helpful. Now going over to the second tab, we can have our shutter speed and gain operation. I like to use angle and ISO. As I automatically switch resolutions and frame rates, it would automatically keep the shutter speed. Let's keep scrolling down here. Record file format, you can choose from MOV, MP4, and AVCHD. Image area video, since this is a full frame sensor, we have the ability to choose between shooting full frame, super 35, and even pixel to pixel. However, the real benefit when using pixel to pixel is when you are shooting in 1080, you get a much further crop if you really need it. I'm gonna leave mine on full and let's go down to record quality. You have a load of different tabs right here of shooting resolution modes from 6K open gate to 5.9K, 4K, and different resolutions on all these frame rates to choose from. This can be a little daunting, so what you can actually do is use display filtering and quickly find what you need by setting, oh, I want exactly 60 frames per second. I can now, it will display me only 60p videos. Also, what's really cool is that the S1H allows you to create a record list. So as we go back to the menus here, we see record quality my list. 4K24, 422, 10 bit is by far what I shoot everything in. So that's my very first format. Then I have 1080 of the exact same thing. I like 48 frames per second since I could just get exactly double and then I have full HD in the same regard. The only thing is when you're shooting 4K, it is going to go into a super 35 crop. That's why I like to choose um, having full HD just so I have the full sensor readout, which is kind of nice. 5.9K allows you to get um, 16 by nine high resolution video. This is gonna give you a sharper and cleaner looking video. However, this is only 420, not 422. Autofocus settings. So autofocus is only gonna work when you have a native lens attached. Right now I have the Panasonic 24 to 105. So it allows me to have these options available. If they are grayed out, that means you are either using an adapted lens or a manual lens and it's not going to work, which is unfortunate. But going into AF custom setting, we can actually fine tune how fast or how slow your sensitivity is. I'm still trying to work out to see what is the best setting on how to use this. Sometimes it works better faster, sometimes it works better slower. So play around with this if you need to rely on autofocus. 
Continuous autofocus, mode two or mode one. Mode one only works when you're recording video and mode two does it all the time. So I like to keep that. Going down to focus peaking, we all know what this is. It allows you to get better um, focus on your objects. And I really enjoy the focus peaking in this camera. I have mine set to plus one and display color to white. And now we're going to the sound panels here. We have our sound record level display. Basically, this is our audio bars telling us how our audio is doing, if, it's, if we're peaking or not. Um, I turned mine off, but I'll show you how you can program it to just be a function button. So you can just quickly enable or disable. Going down here to silent mode, I recommend turning this on. This will kind of disable all the beeps and record buttons. I don't, I like to operate it silently if I can. So we turn that on. Boost IS is also known as IBIS lock on the GH5. And this basically, if you need to get a tripod level of stability, you turn this on and you just hold the camera down and it'll keep everything very static. Manual focus assist allows you to um, enlarge the image. So as you turn the focus, it will actually zoom in and you can clearly and precisely nail your focus. You can set this to, as you turn on, um, as you turn the focus ring, it automatically zoom in and you can get precise focus. And once you're done, you press the half shutter and get out of there. It's a very nice and easy way to get precise focus. However, I find myself as I'm running gun, this just eats too much time. And I find myself pressing that shutter and getting out of the way. Um, so actually I turn this off and I actually don't use that focus window at all. I actually rely on the focus peaking. If I turn this on automatically, you see it's outlining the camera. And if I just rotate it, I don't even need a focus box. I can just see exactly where it's gonna be in focus. I much prefer this. Also what's pretty cool is we have a focus um, window here. So from near focus, it tells us where we're at about four inches and we can go all the way to infinity if we want to. So it's cool to see exactly where we're at. And if you want to change that to meters, you can do that right here. Function button set is by far the way you're going to personalize this camera to fit your needs. Um, of course, if you're familiar with Panasonic, you're well familiar with this. Great news is you have more customization buttons to play around with. So for instance, you have two function buttons in front of the camera, right by the lens here. Um, what I have personally set mine to is the video frame maker. This is a really, really awesome feature. Basically, if I press that first function button right by the lens where my fingers naturally will rest, I bring up CinemaScope bars um, and I have mine masked out. And I'll show you how you can actually customize that. You could be four by three, square, all these different aspect ratios to choose from. And then you have your color of your frame and the mask. So leaving this off, is just gonna have those bars. I do like having that mask. I can see a little bit of what I'm actually recording, but I do wanna make sure I can clearly see the intended view is. Now going back to function buttons, the second button up front, right by my fingers, is the spot meter tool. I really like this and I think it's a great feature Panasonic added. I can press that with one button from the function button and it brings up exactly how many stops overexposed or underexposed I am. So I'm about four and a half stops over. So I'll just bring that to zero and that is about proper exposure. This is gonna read the exposure from this box though. So if I move it to something darker, you see it's negative two. I always place this over the subject's face to make sure they're within the range of exposure. So it's a really handy tool, it's nice and small, but if I need to get out of the way, I can just press it and have a nice clean image left. And function 13 through 16 is these buttons on the wheel right here. I have mine set to waveform being function 13. The sound level display on the right. My monitor LUT is down underneath here. And then I have my video aspect, I mean my full frame or super 35 modes. So I'm shooting, I'm like right here in the menus. If I need to change something quick, I can bring up the waveform. I like putting it in the corner and just getting a sense of where I'm at in terms of exposure on the right is sound. 
So I like to make sure I can view these things, but I don't want them on the screen the whole time. So I love being able to quickly enable and disable. I've also customized these two function buttons right here. The AF on I set to focus speaking. I love that it's right here by my thumb. I can enable it or disable it. And right here I have my record quality list. So instead of going to the menus, that can take time and stressful. I know those menus are pretty large So One more area I like to change is the dial set. And down here to control dial assignment, this wheel right here, I set that to ISO. I think by default it's headphone volume. However, I don't know about you, but I don't really need to adjust headphone volume. I by far need to adjust ISO a lot more. So I like the ability to control aperture, the shutter, and the ISO right from here. One thing that I like they added is focal length, which displays on the back of the screen as you zoom in. So if you need to be ultra specific with it, you can. In the monitor display mode in video, you have your V-Log view assist. So you can choose any of the LUTs. Um, you can import them. However, they should have the V-Log list on there. So I have the nicest LUT that's right here, which is displaying on and off. And just a cool way to make sure you are, your colors are right. Anamorphic D squeeze, if you're shooting with anamorphic lenses, this is very nice to have. So you get this big fat image with a spherical lens. So if you are using a native lens, you have the ability to change the focus ring, which is really nice. You can set it to non-linear or linear. Linear is really nice. It acts more like a traditional manual focus lens. It's not going to do a speed ramp. So I much prefer this. It still doesn't be a true manual focus lens. However, it's a much, much needed improvement and I'm, I'll, I'll take it, I'll say. That's basically everything you need to know about this camera as far as the menu settings. If you have any questions regarding the menus, be sure to write a comment down below. I'll be happy to help you out with that. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, as well as check the affiliate links below if you are interested in picking up this camera. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.